Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy oh, hey. Are you here for the wastewater treatment plant tour? I was just washing my hands. Did you know that every drop of water we use in our homes, schools, businesses has to get cleaned? Well, it's true. And that's what we do at the wastewater treatment plant. Every day we treat about 4 million gallons of water. That water that goes down the drain in your sink, at your, in your kitchen, or that you flush down the toilet in your bathroom, or from your laundry, or doing the dishes, all needs to be cleaned. And it's really important that we keep our water clean because we don't make any more of it. So the water that we have has to be protected. And that's what we do here at the wastewater treatment plant. Once our water has been cleaned here, it ends up going back to Lake Superior, which is where it came from in the first place. Our drinking water comes from Lake Superior. And after that wastewater has been used and cleaned here at the wastewater treatment plant in Superior, it goes back to the lake. So let's go on a tour today and see how we take that dirty wastewater and turn it into clean Lake Superior water. I'm standing outside the front door of the main office at the Superior Wastewater Treatment Plant. This plant was built in 1958, and at the time, it was a primary treatment facility. Primary treatment means allowing solids to settle to the bottom of tanks and floatables like fats, oils, and grease to float to the top. In 1976, with funds from the Clean Water Act, we expanded the plant to become a secondary treatment plant. Secondary treatment uses bugs or microorganisms to break down and help decompose the dissolved organic matter in our sewage. And in 2012, we added UV disinfection, which allowed us to replace chlorine as a disinfecting agent. This is a much more efficient process and uh, more environmentally friendly as well. All right, I'm standing outside of the wastewater treatment plant's screen building. Now the screen building is the very first stop that our sewage makes when it enters the treatment process. For those of you that are living in the city or are connected to our sanitary sewer system, there's about 150 miles of pipes underground in the city that connect our homes, businesses, schools, and other locations to the wastewater treatment plant. Some people are not connected via city sewers and they have septic trucks that come to their home to empty holding tanks or septic tanks that are buried underground. Those septic trucks pull up right here to the screen building and hook up using this big blue hose and the wastewater enters the facility the same way as if it were flowing in through a pipe. So everything gets treated the same way, whether you're connected to our city sewer system or if you have a septic tank at your home. So underneath these cement panels next to me are where those pipes from our sanitary sewer system out the community enters the property. That water, the sewage, can either flow into the screen building over here or if we have really high flows some of it can go into a big pond behind me where it's held safely until we can pump it back into the wastewater treatment plant for additional treatment before the before it goes out to Lake Superior. We treat about four million gallons of water every day at the wastewater treatment plant. We're standing inside of the screen building. Now this is the first place where the influent gets some, some treatment. Our screens literally screen out anything big that's in the sewage. Sometimes these are things that shouldn't be flushed in the first place, like goldfish, or toys, or wipes, baby wipes. 
sanitary sewer system and should be flushed is toilet paper. Besides toilet paper, most other things get caught by our screens, which are about an eighth of an inch in their sizing. So anything bigger than an eighth of an inch will get caught by the screens and sent up through these pipes behind me into the garbage cans. Those garbage cans, we fill about five of them each week and they go into the landfill. So if you're thinking that by flushing your fish down the toilet, it's going to end up in Lake Superior, I've got news, it's getting caught by the screens and it's going to end up in the garbage. So we encourage people to throw away items that can be thrown away and only flush toilet paper, pee, or poop. Off to the side, you see a big white brown tank that holds ferric chloride. And ferric chloride is added to the sewage as it passes through here. And that's going to help us settle out uh, phosphorus and other materials later on in the process. So ferric chloride is added and that helps clump together certain materials later so we can get it out. I'm standing next to the grit chamber. After the water leaves the screen building, it travels underground to reach this grit chamber, which is a cone-shaped or V-shaped tank. At the bottom of this tank, there's an auger that traps and collects all the grit and dirt that's still in the water. We also add air or aerate the water to help that grit and dirt settle to the bottom of the tank. We remove about two garbage cans worth of grit every week using this tank. And by doing that, we help preserve the pumps in the next stop on our treatment plant. If that grit moved through those pumps, it would really wear them out a lot more quickly. So this helps extend the life of some of the equipment here on the wastewater treatment plant. Bars 
running across the tank. Those bars are skimming all the material on the surface, those fats, oils, and greases, all down to the far end of the tank. When it gets to the far end of the tank, those bars make a U-turn and go along the bottom of the tank, scraping all the solid material that's been collected on the floor of this tank and pushing it into pipes that will take it to our solid waste digester. And we'll talk about those later. The water spends about four hours in these tanks, just allowing that material to settle out or float. And again, that's called primary treatment. And it's why we call these the primary clarifiers, because we're allowing the heavy material to drop to the bottom and the light material to float to the top. Now if you look closely, you might notice that this bar at the end here is about to make its U-turn. So it's going to dive underneath the water and then it will go underneath that sewage, make a U-turn and head back towards the building, pushing all the solid waste on the bottom of the tank. I'm standing at the end of the primary clarifiers and you can see the water is flowing over what we call weirs or these little kind of projections coming up. Those weirs help us control the flow of the water through the primary clarifiers so it spends four hours in these tanks. Once the water flows over these weirs, it's going to move to our next treatment process, which is secondary treatment. So I'm standing in the midst of the aeration tank. Now this is our secondary treatment process. And if you recall, secondary treatment is where we use bugs or microorganisms to help break down the dissolved material in the wastewater. If you look at the water, it's kind of a chocolatey brown color. At our last stop at the primary clarifiers, the water was getting fairly clear. But in this tank, we actually add bugs to the wastewater, and that's what gives it this kind of brown color. Those are all the billions of microscopic bugs mixed in with the sewage. Now these bugs are aerobic respirators, which means they need oxygen to breathe. So you might also notice that there's lots of bubbles in the tank. Now those bubbles are coming from air that we're pumping into this tank to help those bugs survive so that they can keep eating that dissolved material and helping us clean the wastewater. Taking care of these bugs is one of the most important things we do here at the wastewater treatment plant. And in addition to adding air to these tanks, we also monitor the water in these tanks for pH, or the amount of acidity in the water, as well as temperature and the amount of oxygen. So we can create just the perfect environment for these microscopic organisms to help us clean the wastewater. The water spends about four hours in this tank before it flows out into the final clarifier.
I'm standing in front of our final clarifier. This might look similar to what the primary clarifiers looked like earlier, and it does something very similar. Again, the water enters these tanks, and you see there's four tanks, and the water slows way down. Now at our last stop at the aeration tank, you remember we added bugs or microorganisms to the water to help us get the dissolved material out of that wastewater. Well now we need to remove the bugs from the wastewater. So by bringing the water to these tanks and allowing it to slow down, those bugs which have eaten and are happy and full and heavy are sinking to the bottom of the tank. So we have these same bars that go along the surface and scrape anything that's floating to the far end, but they're also scraping along the bottom of the tank to collect those bugs. Now half of those bugs, or about, will end up back in the aeration tank where they're going to eat, have more, and help us clean that water again. The other half of the bugs are going to go to our solid waste digester. So we're at the end of the final clarifiers. At this point, the water is leaving the tank. It's about 93 to 95% clean, so it's in really good shape. And if you notice, it flows over these weirs, just like it did up at our primary clarifier. The weirs help us control the flow of the water through these tanks. And you should notice how clear that water is as it's flowing over the weirs. So what the quality of the water that's exiting, the effluent that's leaving the wastewater treatment plant, how clean that is. 
We do that in the water chemistry lab, but we also have some equipment set up to take samples right from this UV building. So next to me, we have a machine that takes a sample about every three to five minutes for the amount of nitrogen and phosphorus in the water. Over to the other side, we have a machine that's measuring the pH of the water before it leaves the plant. This is really important for us to know how clean that water is to make sure that we're keeping it in the right condition. After 12 hours, the water is finally clean and it's exiting the wastewater treatment plant as effluent and going out into the St. Louis River estuary or the Lake Superior Harbor. That water is leaving the treatment plant in a pipe about eight feet below the surface of the water. I'm standing outside of our solid waste digester. These large round brick buildings behind me are where all that solid waste that we were either scraping off the bottom of our tanks or taking off the floating material from those tanks is sent. Inside these tanks there's anaerobic bacteria. Anaerobic means these bacteria don't use oxygen. In the process of eating and breaking down the solid waste for us, those anaerobic bacteria create gas. They create two types of gas, carbon dioxide and methane gas. The methane gas actually helps us heat these buildings. These buildings are held at about 95 to 110 degrees, and it takes about 10 days for that solid waste to get digested. Any excess methane gas can be used not only to heat the building, but could heat other buildings on our property or we can flame it off using the torch behind me. You see that red, kind of burnt red metal torch behind me where some of that excess methane gas will be flamed off if we don't use it for heating our facilities. So one of the jokes we like to make is that bug farts help heat our building. After that solid waste has been digested for about 10 days, at around 100 degrees, it's sent to our uh, belt filter press where we squeeze out any remaining liquid before the solid waste goes to the landfill. So here in the belt filter press, this machine behind me squeezes out a lot of the remaining liquid in the solid waste. You can see it coming off the roller behind me. This material is getting carried up a conveyor belt a hopper which will eventually get unloaded into a dump truck. That dump truck will take that solid waste or the sludge cake to the landfill when it's filled up. We send about three to five dump truck loads of solid waste to the landfill every week.
Well, thank you for joining us today on the tour of the wastewater treatment plant. You're always welcome to give us a call and set up an appointment to visit us in person for one of these tours. We want to remind you that you can help us out by only flushing toilet paper, human waste, or water down your toilet and making sure that anything else gets thrown in the garbage. Also by saving water as much as possible. So turning off your faucet when you're not using it. Every drop that goes down the sink needs to get treated here, whether it's clean or dirty. So it's best to conserve water and only flush those items like toilet paper, pee, or poop. Thanks for helping us keep it clean.